Hello everyone, I hope you're all well. Welcome. I thought I'd record another video for YouTube and this time I thought I'd use my Crocus from the Crocus stamp set 624 and I just love that Crocus stamp set. So what I've got is I've got a piece of white smooth card and I haven't cut that card quite right so we'll just cut that now there we go so we've just cut that just so that it's right now so we'll just mention the card now so this is four and a half inches by six and a half inches with a piece of black card with a quarter of an inch border and a five by seven inch card blank. So we'll just bring that in. And what I'm going to do is, I'm, as yesterday, I did a card in blues and yellows, and I'm going to do the same again today, but show a card that looks completely different. So have I got the card from yesterday? So if you didn't see the card from yesterday, this is the card from yesterday, just in case you didn't see that. So if you want to watch that, that's on yesterday's video on the YouTube. And today I want to show how the same colours can look completely different. So what this time, well, they're not the same colours as in blues and yellows, because this one is turquoise and the lemon. So turquoise and lemon I'm using this time. So I'm going to put out plenty of the turquoise and I'm going to use my brayer again. There's plenty of, crikey, there is plenty of turquoise as well there. Let's get another piece of scrap card just so we can use up that paint. I'm always a great believer in you don't don't waste your paint so you can see I'm not doing anything technical I'm just brayering a piece of card with turquoise paint so what I'm going to do is that's just the scrap card so we'll just put that on one side and we'll just bring this in again now this paint by Dina Wakely has got a good open time so it stays wetter longer and I've got a little bit of a a black piece of thread there there we go so this paint stays wetter longer now why am I brayering over continually if I brayer over continually and make sure all the paint is off my brayer one it gives me more depth and two it actually gives me texture to my card so that works quite nicely so we'll just move that out of the way and we'll just wipe this up and what we're going to do is we're going to let that just rest before I do anything else with the card. One, because I want the colours this time, I don't want them to mix. In my previous card, they mixed a little bit because that was the technique that I was doing. But I don't want this to necessarily mix. So I want another piece of card. Now I'm going to be using my Bristol Smooth card. And a few people have asked me which Bristol, uh, which Bristol Smooth am I using because mine looks a little bit whiter. It's an extra smooth surface and it's Canson, uh, heavy duty. Um, and it's Bristol Smooth and it actually says white, heavy bright white paper. So the reason I bought this Canson one is because normally when I use Bristol Smooth, it's not quite white. So I like this one because it is white. Right, let's stamp our image. So in yesterday's video, I showed you how in a way to do um, no line colouring so that it had got no lines on it and you actually coloured in with your Ecoline pens. This time I'm just going to colour with my Ecoline pens in the normal way that I do it. So, did we leave an acrylic block out? No, we didn't. 
So let's just use that A6 acrylic block. And I just think this crocus stamp, I think it's stunning. Just stunning, I think, that image is. Right, let's just give this a stamp now. Now, because I'm stamping on that Bristol Smooth, you do have to be aware of that. Because it's so smooth, it's like a slick surface because it's so smooth. And because of that, and it hasn't got the properties of being porous, you need to dry and blot the image or else the ink just rests on the surface and you, you don't want that before you start colouring. You want to make sure that your ink is dry before you start that colouring. Now we're using a permanent ink, which is the Versafine Claire and the colour is Nocturne. And it's a permanent ink, which means that I can watercolour without that ink smudging, which is perfect for what I want. And I just think that image is stunning. Absolutely stunning. So we'll get some fresh copy of paper. I have to put everything on one side or a bit further away because my desk area is not that big. So I can't have everything all in one place. So I have to reach for some things. So there's not too much ink come off that. Just a little bit. But let's blot it and make sure that we do the job properly. So what I'm going to do now is grab my Ecoline pens. So grab the pens. And what I'm going to do is use some yellows. So I, I want a definite yellow. Let me see what we've got. So what's this one? So we've got the lemon yellow, which we used yesterday. And what others have we got? That says sand yellow, which might give us a little bit of darkness. What does this say? And this says deep yellow. So you can see they've got like sort of orangey tinges, but they are sort of a, a deep yellow. What's that one? Deep yellow. Yes, I think those will be fine. As far as I can see, yes, we've got leaves, so we need some greens. So let's have that green and that green. I'll mention the green colours as well. And let's just have what colours that? There we go, and let's have a brown. Sometimes when I'm colouring leaves, I do like to have a little bit of brown on there. So what we've got is we've got lemon yellow, deep yellow, and sand yellow for the yellows. And I know some of you haven't got Ecoline pens, but don't worry, you can use your Distress Oxides. Or if you want something brighter, you can use your Distress Inks. I'm also using grass green, bronze green and sepia. So just so that you know the colours. I know some of you have got the, the colours, but just for those, just in case you haven't. And what I'm going to do is just colour these in my normal, simple way, in a very basic way. So first of all, let's not use all that. I don't want to use my Bristol Smooth, so let's just make sure that this brush is clean. There we go. Always make sure your water brush or your paint brush is clean. Always make sure of that. I'm also putting a piece of, I'm leaving this piece of copy. I don't know what I'm keeping that acrylic block there for. I'm keeping this piece of copier paper here just so that I can lean on that. Just so I can lean on it. Now, yesterday, I showed how to colour in more detail and I wanted to show that because I don't want to just do things the same way every single time 
because I want to offer you variety. So that's why I coloured in a different way yesterday. But this way is the way I normally colour day to day and I don't make it too complicated for myself. So first of all, what I do is I grab, when I'm grabbing the colours, first of all, I obviously know this is the light colour. Can you see that? No, you can't. So I can see that's the light colour. And then I just want to decide on these. So we've got that colour. And then we've got this colour. You see, that one is a little bit orange. So we won't use that initially. So, so the colours that I'm going to use initially are the sand yellow and the lemon yellow. The one that says deep yellow is a little bit more orangey. So I'm just going to hang fire with that just initially. So when I want, I always test my colours just on a piece of card and especially on the card that I'm using. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going, this is, this is how I colour day to day. So I place the first layer of colour on and I know some of you, some of you don't like colouring. You, you like it, but you don't want it to be too complicated and you don't want it to be too complicated but you still want good results. For me, the Ecoline pens offer that. They offer the good results. So we've got that first colour on. And what I'm going to do then is then take the sand yellow. Just to give me a little bit darker colour. So it just gives me a little bit darker shading. Just add a little bit darker shading. And you can see where the shading is. Because somebody called Tracy has put the shading in for you. So I'm just going to add a little bit more of that yellow. Just a little bit more of the yellow. And then all I'm going to do is use my water brush. Let's have a, where's the kitchen roll? Always have a piece of kitchen roll just on the side here. You see, that water brush is flowing too much for me. So I'm just going to dab it onto, yeah, it's just, that's just flowing too much. I do need to get some new water brushes. If anybody can recommend a particular water brush that doesn't flow too much, then if you've got any recommendations, just let me know. I'm going to use a paintbrush because I just think it, because it's flowing so much, it, it's it's out of my control. It, it's just moving too much, the water is. So I'm just going to blend them two colours. You might not see it much on camera because it's quite a pale, it's quite a pale colour. But what I do is I just blend that colour out really quickly. Nothing too complicated, look, and take seconds. All as I do then to give me more depth, is scribble the first colour, which was lemon yellow. And if I decide I want a little bit more colour, a little bit more vibrancy, I just scribble it onto my non-stick craft sheet and just add a little bit more of that yellow, just to give me a bit more vibrancy, a little bit more depth to the colour. So this is what I call my cheats way of colouring without anything too technical or too challenging. But I still want it to look good. So I still want depth of colour. So I'm then going to go to that sand yellow. That sand yellow and just add a little bit more depth of colour with the sand yellow. So pick that sand yellow up. And just blend it out, pick it up again, just add that darker shade of yellow. I'll lift it up for you just so that you can see. Just adding that darker shade of yellow. And really for the flower head, you've, that's almost finished, you just you don't need anything else. So you can't get simpler than that, can you? 
you can't get much simpler than that. And all you do is pick up that yellow and just add some darker touches where I've put the shading in for you. Just add some of those darker touches where I've put the shading in for you. That's it. That's your colouring done. And you're just going to do the same just on the leaves as well. Okay, so there you go. Much simplified compared to yesterday's. So let's just wipe that brush because we don't want the yellow. Just a bit some fresh water. And let's do the same with the green. Leave your copy of paper here. Use the lightest colour, which is grass green. And all I'm going to do is apply that grass green. I'm just going to leave some of the area white on the leaves so that it gives me space to blend that out. And it's nice if you can leave a little touch of white. It just lifts the whole design. Try not to lean on your work because then you, you, it's, you've got less chance of creating a mess. And also you're giving this time to rest if you want to add any more to it. So just blend that colour out and leave a little bit of the leaf and a little bit of the stem. Leave a touch of white. If you don't leave a touch of white, don't worry, you can add it back in with a gel pen. So then all I'm going to do is add a little bit of darkness. I'm just going to take a little bit of that. Which one was this? It was um, bronze green, just to give me a little bit of depth. Just blend that out. A little bit of depth here. Just for a little bit of darkness. And because the card's still a little bit wet, you'll find that it just bleeds out anyway. It just blends out. So what I like to do with, with leaves, I just like to add a little touch of brown. So I'm going to take a little touch of the brown and I just like to add a little bit of brown just to give me a little bit more shading. And just, just a little bit. Not much at all. And that is your colouring done. So this is the simplified version of yesterday's. But I did yesterday's video for a reason, because if you're doing videos and you're giving ideas, you need to work outside your comfort zone sometimes and just show some different ways of doing things. And also, with being a stamp designer, I think it's important for me to show how the stamps can be used in many different ways. Even if it's not a normal way that I work, I think it's important that you show that, that you show the different ways that it works. I'll just add a little bit, there we go. So that is your colouring done. So when you look at your flower, what you can do then is, you know the, the last colour, which was a deep yellow, which had got that more orangey tinge in, you can take a little touch of that if you wish and you can just add a little touch of the orange. Well, it isn't orange, it calls it deep yellow. Deep yellow. And when it goes on with the other colours, this just adds a little bit of warmth, a little bit of warmth to the crocus. But that's it. You don't have to add this if you don't wish but it just adds that, that touch of warmth to that crocus. Just a little bit of warmth. But you do not need to add that. You can just leave it coloured as you've done. I'm just adding it because it just brings a little bit of warmth to the design. Just a touch. I 
let's wipe that up and then just to blend it in I'm going to use the very lightest colour which is lemon yellow and just blend that all in that's it so you're done so let's just put those pens to one side you always think it's a good idea to just have your copy of paper and everything ready because you just you don't create a mess then let's see if i can reach my scissors i should leave these scissors out on a desk really but as you can see just simply colored not too complicated at all so i'm just going to cut this card down because i don't want to waste any of it let's just cut that down Plus, I like to work with a smaller piece of card. So I'm going to save that bristle smooth. Let's just put that back in my book. There we go. And let's just cut this. Let's cut this out. And while we're cutting this out, that painted piece that we did is resting and is also drying naturally. I'm going to leave a white border around the crocus. Just think it makes it pop a little bit more. I do love this image. So just cut that out. Just have my paths now finished in the garden. So I've now got a load of mess to clean up. But I thought I'd do the video first. But I've got a load of mess to clean up and I've got a, a we've got a border to reshape. We, I say we because Ian will reshape it. I do all the pretties like putting the soil on and planting the plants. So that's what I do. And I look after everything. Ian just does the heavy work. I can't dig soil up. I can't even lift it once it's dug up. So I'm hopeless when it comes to that. So yes. So that's a blue job. We have blue jobs. I know I shouldn't be, you know, we shouldn't say that, but there's certain jobs that I just cannot do in the garden. And digging up turf, which weighs an absolute ton, I can't do. I can cut it out. But then lifting it, just so heavy. So today's job is making it look pretty. Because at the moment, the soil, dirt, concrete bits, just everywhere. But I like this bit. I like the bit of making it look nice. And now I've got space, a little bit more space for some more bulbs. And some more plants. Exciting. Any excuse for me to buy another plant. Seriously, I'm plant obsessed. There we go. Let's just chuck that on the floor because I can't be bothered to think about that. Let's move that out of the way. Now this is more simplified colouring. And now there's a reason behind why I did yesterday's video will come to light. I personally think that is just as beautiful as yesterday's. And my lesson here is that you have to do what makes you happy. So if you like colouring, you can spend hours. But my point here is that if you like colouring, but you only like to do it for five or ten minutes, then your colouring can look just as good in simplified ways. So that was my reasoning behind yesterday's video as well. I always like to explain why I do things, uh, my reasoning behind them. And also, I'd, because I'm, I try to educate, it doesn't mean I know everything. What I try to do is just educate in the mistakes that I've learned, in some shortcuts, little tips that I've learned. We all learn in different ways and it's just passing on 
the knowledge that I've developed or the mistakes I've made, just passing that information on. And that's why I did yesterday's video, so I can, so I can highlight the difference in techniques and why we do some things. So just because something is more simplified to do doesn't mean it's any less beautiful. So you go with what works for you. Now, I'm just giving the flower some shape just with my scissors. Again, you professionals can use your ball tool and your proper mat. I just use a mat that I found in some packaging. So, what we've got now is we've got a very flat background and I've got my flower. And I want to do a little bit more to the background, but so you can see that it's actually domed. That flower is actually domed now, so it's got more shape. Right, let's do a little bit more work on the background. Please tell me, I was going to say, please tell me my stencil's still here. Right, let's move this on one side. And what we're going to do now, oh, I've got this lemon, haven't I? That? Let's see if I can squeeze any more lemon out. You'd think I'd learn and actually put it in the bin. But I don't put it in the bin until I know, look, see, it's harder to squeeze. But until I know that that paint is definitely gone. So I'm going to take the yellow and I'm going to use the stencil I used yesterday because I want to show how it can look different. So I'm using the yellow and off camera, I'm just spritzing with water. So I'm just spritzing that paint with water that's on the stencil. So it's just got water on it. And I'm just going to place that on there. And we'll use the same piece of kitchen roll and just rest that on there. Just give that time to soak in. Look at this. Let me just bring this scrap of paper in. Let's just mop this up just for a, a reason. I'm trying to do things because I don't want to place my paper in that. Right. Let's see if this rolls out. See if you can roll it out now. If you roll out your bray, let me just roll this out. You can actually see some of the pattern on the bray from the stencil. You can see some of the pattern from the bray on the stencil. So you could create another back. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with backgrounds. But you could create another background. So that's just rested on there. Let's lift that up. And then we've got that touch of yellow just on. Let me just lift this up. Just on the background. Just so it makes it a little bit more varied. Let's see if there's anything left on the stencil. Let's spritz it again. Let's spritz that stencil with water again because I could make another card at a later date with leftovers. I do like to use the leftovers. Look, we've still got another print. So perfect, I can create another card with that which is what I enjoy. I enjoy making more backgrounds. There we go. Right. What we need to do now is we need to dry that card. Let me just wipe my grey just so we've got the thick off there. And let's grab our heat tool. It's the one thing I never plug in. I never plug the heat tool in until I want to use it. So let's just... dry that paint. Because I want to add some stamp into that as well. So just giving that a good dry. Dry it on the reverse as well. Now 
Now, don't forget now, you've got a piece of card now that's no longer porous because you've got those paint layers on. And what I want to do is add a little bit of stamping. But I want to test the colour first. So let's bring in that scrap paper so we can test the colour. I'm going to test the colour just on here, just so I can see what it looks like. So this is Warm Breeze, Versafine Claire, and this is just my scrap paper. I just want to see what this colour looks like. Yeah, that's quite a nice colour, that is. So it's just making sure that you've got the right colour. Now, it's important that you test those colours. If you don't test the colours, you're not going to know whether it's going to work on your project or not. You need to make sure it's going to work on your project. What you also need to remember is that this card is no longer porous. So because it's no longer porous, I'm going to have to dry and blot. Just dry and blot your work. And it's up to you whether you use first generation or second generation stamping. And obviously just remember when you've got your stamp on your fingers like I have, Make sure you don't just drop it on your artwork. So that's the Warm Breeze ink, which now is sort of lying on the top. I can see it very shiny because you've now got that layer of paint that is a plastic layer. And let me see if I can show you how shiny it is. I can there. There you go. You can see how shiny that ink is. So let's give that a dry. Because really when you're using this ink, they're hoping that you're using it on an absorbent surface. So if you're not, you have to, there's things that you have to do to make sure that will work, to make sure that you're not going to smudge it. So that means you need to dry the ink and blot. So just take your time because you're stamping onto that acrylic paint which is a plastic layer. Just dry it from the back and again. And it's surprising how much of a dry you need to give it. So then what I do is I always go over the top and blot just in case my heat tool has missed any of those areas and it's surprising. Look how much ink, look how much ink is off there just because you're stamping onto a plastic surface. So just blot that and I would give it a little bit more, I would give it a little bit more of a dry. Don't leave it to dry naturally because you're going to be waiting forever. You need to make sure that's dry. And the thing is, you've got two layers of paint on there. So you still get good results, it just takes a little bit of patience, that's all. Just to make sure that that's blotted. If you don't want to do it with the VersaFine Claire onto the paint, then don't. You can, you can just use your 
Distress Oxides in a blue and yellow and then stamp over that if you wish. So you see my flower is going to go on here like this. But what I want to do is a little bit more stamping. So let's, where's my stamp? You know me now. Just dump the stamp and then I'm, I can't find it afterwards. So I want the crocus text. Ugh, I just want an A7, I've got hair in my mouth, an A7 block. So just grab an A7 block. There we go. And we're just now going to stamp in the black. So let's just add this here. Just to add that there. There's something else I also need to mention about acrylic paint. You also need to remember that it can be quite slippy because you've got that acrylic paint on a slick surface. So you need to just remember that it can be quite slippy. So just be aware of that. You don't need to press too hard, just hard enough to get that image. So I'm thinking it's going to grow here. Like that. Like that. So you can just see that. So yes, I do talk to myself. I know, I know. Just stamp that again. Just further over this side. Like so. Bring that flower in again. This is how I faff, honestly. This is how I faff all the time. So leave it at that for the moment. I always do this. So I'm just going to blot that ink. I'll dry the black ink. I'm just going to blot it a couple of times just to make sure. Just blot that a couple of times and then I can dry it. Just going to give that black ink a dry. And what happens is the black ink makes the blue ink go further into the background because that black ink has got more depth and it's a stronger colour so it pushes the blue into the background. And now you can't tell which has come first, whether the stenciling came first, second, you can't tell. Just so you can see that so the blue goes into the background there we go always get into the habit of unplugging your heat tool just to be to be on the safe side just unplug that so let's Look at this through camera. Oh yes, what a beautiful flower, beautiful flower. I'm going to grab some cotton 
that I'm going to add behind this. Just turn that flower over. Add some little strips to this bottom area as well. There we go. And then I'm just going to add some black cotton, which will also echo the black stamping in the background and also the black stamping that's on the crocus. Make sure you get plenty of cotton so that you can spread it out. Did I pull the back off? No, I didn't. That's not going to catch anything then, is it? If I don't pull the tape off, I've pulled that one off. So what I like to do is just plonk it down, stretch it out a little bit. Then I can pick it up with the flower. There we go. Pick that up, put a little bit down there and then cut another piece of the foam tape just to sandwich that in between just makes it easier to stick down there we go that's it and then we can add a little bit of adhesive just to our flower just so that I can move it if I don't get it in the exact place. Let's roll those sleeves up, which means I mean business. There we go. So I've not, you'll notice I've not stuck the leaves down because I want that movement, let's trap there, I want that movement in the card. If I don't stick the leaves down like this, I've got some movement in the leaf. Where's my white gel pen? So we've got this white gel pen. Let's just add a little bit of some, just some. little touches of white just to the crocus just to lift it a little bit so we'll just add some little touches of white and you'll see the white more in real life no don't put that there so what I want to do now is just add some yellow splatters. We've not finished, we've got to add other things. So just add some yellow splatters. Just to that. Just to that background. And make sure that you get some on your crocus as well. Just add some white splatters. Is this the pen? That just sounds very empty. Let's get that going. Now that's better. You have to get it flowing. There we go. Works so much easier if you get it flowing. Let's just wipe that up. So I'm going to grab the crocus sentiment again. And let's grab a piece of card. Just a scrap of card. I don't think we need that much card, do we? Just for a little sentiment. So I'm just using my Pink Frog Smooth card. to add the sentiment, which I can't pick up.
and you don't have to worry about slipping. Well, what you do have to worry about is making sure that you stamp straight. And I could have stamped straight better if I tried. That wasn't straight in a million years. So let's just stamp straight. It really does help if you stamp straight. That's better. Much better. So we'll just cut that out. And sometimes it's a good idea to leave it a bit longer before you cut it shorter. Just so that if you want that more, if you want more white card, then you haven't cut it away too soon. On this occasion, I don't. But you never know until you put it against your project, whether you want that or not. Let me just straighten that up a little bit. There we go. So bring this into shot. So I can just add my crocus here. So we just place that down. We won't add any shading yet because we've still got those splatters that are still a little bit wet. So we'll just give those a couple of seconds to dry at the moment. Let's lift that up a little bit. Just add that crocus there. I want to add another little detail. I bet you can't guess what detail I want to add. I bet you haven't got a clue. Let's just move this stamp set out of the way I bet you haven't got a clue what stamp I want to use now I can hear you all shouting I want to use that so I just want to use my little beardies because I just think they're fab. I think I might use the three birdies this time. Nice good layer of ink, however small. That seems very shiny, is that the wrong? Do you know, I've got that many pieces of card. Nobody knows which card's which. Let's just... Now give that time to rest on your card. Even though it's a small stamp, you still need to give it time because at the end of the day, it's a silhouette. So you need to give that time just to rest on there. Now, I told you that I wouldn't leave, be able to leave these birds alone, didn't I? I said that I'd be using them quite frequently. So let's cut these out. And I won't cut the length. I won't decide on the length of the birds just yet until I've got it near the card. Then I can decide on the length. Now, on some of my cards, you've seen that I've left a white border around the beards. This time, I'm cutting it as is. So I'm not leaving a white border. So just cutting three little beardies out. Just go under the tail, just so it looks a little bit more realistic if that tail is sticking out. I like to give you some exercise with your hands, you know. I like to give you something to do. I know how much you all love cutting out. <coughs> I adore it, I love cutting out. 
just cut that. And at the moment, I'm cutting the full length just until I decide what I actually want, what length I want. There we go. Just, there we go. So I can take my birds now and then I can just see if I want them. Just cut that a little bit shorter, like so. And just see, let's move that along a bit. Yes, and we'll have the, let's have a look. Yes, we're going to have the little birdies there. Have the little birdies. Just a little bit of adhesive. I have loved this whole release, I must admit. Part one, part two, I've just loved it. Just add that there. So just adding that on top of the sentiment, it makes another feature of the sentiment. Just grab that gel pen and just Add a little, a few little white touches just to the birds, like so. Where's my ink tense pencil? Now we've made that, made sure that's stuck down. I can now go along the edges with my grey ink tense because that Posca pen is now dry. Let's just blend that out. Just blend out. And just with what you've got left, you'll be able to put a little bit of the shading just at the top. There we go. I have to say I do love those little beards. I just think they're lovely. I think the beards are just gorgeous. Just so that you can see the little... And I love the little yellow splatters just on the leaf and just here. I just think they work so well. I really do think they work beautiful. Right. We'll add a little bit of washi tape just to echo that little bit of black. Try to, try to tear it sort of, so it's not regimented. In other words, so you've got like fat bits and thin bits, just so that they're not too regimented. There we go. I love adding just random bits of washi. There we go. And a little bit more. Just, just so the flower looks a little bit grounded. Just add a little bit more. Add a little bit more. I do spend more time faffing with washi than anything else. There we go. Now let's add this to our cards. Just so classy. I think that crocus is gorgeous i just think it's so classy and just giving that leaving that leaf a little bit loose just gives it a little bit more movement go 
going to have to stand up like I always do just to add it to the card mat just pick it up just to maneuver it a little bit just bend that card just so that it makes good contact you've added those paint layers so it's trying to work against you so just spend a little bit of time just making sure that it's all stuck down just make sure it's all stuck down and then i'm going to add that to a five by seven inch card blank make sure it opens up the right way amazed how long cards take me to do they just take me an age but i enjoy it and that's the main thing let's just add that let me just see if i've got some little gems or anything just let that sit on there. i do like those yellow splatters Do love them yellow splatters. I have to say, this crocus is divine, absolutely divine. Right, I need a little. Try using the right end, Tracy. Is that a little one? This is going to drive me mad now. Or is the smaller? See, I can't be doing with faffing like that. Let me just see which is the smallest one them all right okay so let's turn them over and i'm just going to put a little gem here these are by phil martin and they just add a little a little touch to your project there we go just add a little touch of something just to finish it off and I only need three on there let's move those out of the way let's move that glue out of the way and that is your card finished just so that you can see the crocus doesn't it look more lifelike because it's got that leaf just sticking up and you've got the yellow in the crocus echoed with the yellow of the stenciling the yellow of the splatters and i love i adore those little birds absolutely love them so i hope you've enjoyed that another card for you i hope you'll you'll have a go and if you do please don't hesitate to tag me I absolutely adore seeing your creations. So love to all and I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.